So as I prefaced earlier, our final session today um, is about sustainability and the right time to go green, climate neutrality, sustainable energy and prospects for the green economy. And it's something that I think has been in conversation for most people since um, the strikes, um, talks from Greta Thunberg, etc. And I think it's on the minds of everybody. So it should be an interesting discussion that we have today. We have four speakers for this session. Again, we'll have a discussion at the end of their short presentations. Um, our first speaker is Mr. Eric Fiegenbaum, Chief Research Engineer at the Norwegian Institute of Transport Economics. And I was only speaking with my taxi driver this morning who was driving a fully electric car, which is not very common in Dublin. Um, and he was all for them, but also was dying to know what we could learn from Norway, as am I. So please welcome Mr. Eric Fiegenbaum. Yep, so thank you. I actually also talked to the taxi driver yesterday and he said there was one <laughs> electric taxi in, in Dublin, so I guess you got, you got the one. So thank you. Um, so I'll be talking about the Norwegian electric vehicle market. And um, before I start, I just, you might wonder why I have a Lego set on the, on the front page. And um, this is actually because uh, I find it uplifting that uh, the children learn to play with electric cars. So it's, this house has an electric car, so that's the reason. So the Institute of Transport Economics um, is a non-profit research foundation, and our mission is to develop and disseminate transportation knowledge with scientific quality and practical application. Uh, we're about 108 employees, and we cover virtually all topics with, with regards to, to transport, for also safety and uh, uh, modeling, etc. <clears throat> if we go to Norway, um, some quick facts. We have about 2.75 million passenger vehicles. And um, currently, uh, this month, we passed 9% of the total fleet are now battery electric cars. And you can add another 4%, which are plug-in hybrid cars. So we have 13% of the passenger car fleet has a plug in Norway uh, now. Um, we have built out quite a lot of charging infrastructure. We have 1,200 um, uh, fast chargers for the CCS, Shademo type of vehicles. In addition, um, Tesla also had their chargers. There are 7,500 public normal chargers, uh, but then you have to add all the available electricity everywhere else from outdoor power sockets, etc., that also can be used for charging, which is very common to have in Norway. So this, this number is, is very understated. Uh, there are probably hundreds of thousands of, of potential ch charging spots. Um, at home, people have installed more than 90,000 uh, of these wall box home chargers. So this is also taken care of. They have to pay for this uh, by themselves. Uh, there is some support for, for housing communities and flat owners, but otherwise private uh, house owners uh, pay for themselves. Travel speeds are fairly low, so that we get, can get uh, quite a long way on the electricity we have in the car. And Norwegians, we tend to live in small houses, uh, and then we have uh, access to uh, parking, and we can charge at home, So, which is very important that you can charge every day. And uh, the market shares have gone up uh, steadily from 2011, and we're now approaching 50% market share for battery electric cars in the Norwegian uh, uh, market, and then another 10% are plug-in hybrids. This has been enabled by a very long time period of experiment, experimentation, but also huge incentives. So we have um, exemptions from value added tax, exemption from the registration tax, which could be 5,000 to 10,000 euros for a mid-sized car. The annual tax is reduced. Um, and then we have some local incentives that have been quite popular. So you can drive for free through the toll roads, there has been free parking, and um, some places you have access to, to the bus lanes, which has been so successful that you now have to be more than one people in the car in the rush hours, because otherwise you would clog up the, the bus lanes. Uh, there is a new policy now where uh, up to 50% uh, rates of, the, of what the uh, internal combustion energy vehicle owners pay will also be introduced for 
electric cars. So if we look at um, <clears throat> what this means for a, for a, a buyer of a, a car, we can have the Volkswagen Golf in three versions. Those of you that can see the screen can see it over there. The gasoline car is to the left and the battery electric car is to the right and in the middle you have the plug-in hybrid. So uh, the battery electric car is non-taxed, 32,000 euros. The plug-in hybrid has the value-added tax, the registration tax sums up to zero for that. And then we have the uh, value-added tax and the registration tax for the, for the gasoline car. And then the battery electric car becomes the cheapest option, which is very different from other countries. But then you also have very low energy costs in Norway. So you would save about 1,200 euros per year for an average driving length due to the cheap electricity. And you also have the reduced annual tax. So this sums up to about 1,900 euros per year of potential savings for a, a compact car. But then in addition, you have uh, <coughs> um, local incentives. And they, when we ask people how much time they save in the bus lane, how much they save uh, not paying in the toll roads, for the average user, this sums up to 1,500 euros per year. Um, of which most is the toll road exemption. If you go to Ireland, in Norway we would save 1,200 euros on the energy cost. In Ireland you would save only 700 because the electricity is uh, much more expensive. But the Norwegian incentive package looks extremely large. It might not have to be that large. Uh, but it was in the originally put in place to get people out of regular cars and into some very small little bit primitive cars, and then you have to have really powerful incentives. It didn't work so well, even with those large incentives, but now it's, it's booming because we put people out, take people out of the regular car and put them into equal substitutes, and then the, uh, the policies start working. And the policies and incentives are pulling towards the national target, which is um, to only sell uh, battery electric uh, or zero emission cars from 2025, that's the overall target. So the diffusion of EVs uh, started around the cities. You have 2008 to the left and uh, 2016 to the right. And each spot here, black spot uh, to the left on the map on the left is, is, is a municipality. And here you can see the cities, uh, if I, I can't po point to the screen, but um, it's, it's spread around Oslo, it's spread around uh, Bergen, it's spread around Trondheim to larger and larger circles. And now you have shares on the road. Uh, <clears throat> in all the cities, you have past 10% uh, vehicles on, on the road. And even in the rush hour, it is up to 20, 25% of the cars are battery electric in the, in the real traffic. Uh, but there is a long story behind this. Uh, you can read it about it in a research paper I made, which is this figure. It's a little bit complex. I won't go through it. But the main point here is that we have had some global development enablers, like the lithium battery have been developed. People can get the Nobel Prize for that. We have the EU CO2 target, which now uh, uh, puts a lot of new models on the road, which will make our policies work even more efficient. Uh, the internal combustion engine uh, sector has been rather weak in Norway because we only have vehicle importers, we don't have producers. Um, and then we have <coughs> allowed for a lot of experimentation in niche markets. So the first incentive came already in 1990, which was the exemption from the registration tax, and that enabled gradual experimentation and knowledge building from the bottom and upwards. So we have had actually a bottom-up pressure to get incentives, which then have, have uh, initiated um, a lot of activities and uh, also created the first markets. And then the large car manufacturers could take advantage of this situation when they came with their uh, fully industrialized cars from 2011-2012. So what we do, we push the adoption curve, make it much steeper with our large incentives, <laughs> Um, so we have a much more compressed diffusion process. Um, of course, that has some costs, which are easier, perhaps more easy to cover in Norway, where we can sort of uh, 
make uh, up our budget with some money from the oil sector. Uh, so uh, you might not have all the same options in, in, in Ireland. But we also, you have to remember that the incentives now are kept so large to meet this 2025 target. And there is a, a cross-partisan agreement that this uh, should continue. So, uh, a few points of what I think has made this work. First of all, you have to have knowledge. People have to be aware of the, that battery electric cars works uh, and, uh, and that there are no practical issues with them. They have to be visible. I, I walked here from the hotel. I didn't see any electric cars on the way. So they are virtually invisible here. They have to be practical so that they work for the target group. I think that now is taken care of, will be taken care of for Ireland. You don't have those long distances here. You have a stable climate. It's not so cold in the winter. Maybe it's wet, I don't know. <laughs> then you have to have policies, and the policies should be directed towards a target. You have to t have a target. Where does Ireland want to go? What do you want to achieve? And then you can build a policy around that, and that policy should be stable so that uh, people can invest in the businesses that have to deliver the electromobility solutions to the consumers. And of course, consumers will also be more confident that this um, uh, will last. Then you need incentives, which makes the cars economic to own and use for the consumers and other user groups. And, and they should also, uh, incentives should also remove barriers and meet different types of user uh, needs. And um, finally, I would suggest that you come to Norway and get inspired by how it works in practice. Thank you.